Welcome to the authentication and authorization demo. In this video, we demonstrate the authentication and authorization steps presented on the previous page. The student user on the current workstation is not configured to directly access the Minikube Kubernetes cluster. Instead, the student user assumes the Minikube cluster administrator role when communicating with the Kubernetes API. Let's configure the student user and the Kubernetes cluster to authenticate the user and grant the user a limited set of permissions through a role-based access control policy. Before diving into the exercise, make sure that the Minikube Kubernetes cluster is started. If needed, run Minikube status and or Minikube start to check the cluster status or start it. Let's first view the content of the Cube Control Client Configuration Manifest and observe the only context Minikube and the only user Minikube created by default. Now let's create an LFS158 namespace for the student user. Create an RBAC directory and CD into it. Create a private key for the student user with OpenSSL, then create a certificate signing request for the student user with OpenSSL tool. It is safe to disregard the warnings. Now let's create a YAML manifest for a certificate signing request object and save it with a blank value for the request field. YAML content is found on the previous page of this chapter. Now let's view the certificate encoded in base 64 and assign it to the request field in the sign request YAML file. Let's create the certificate signing request object, then list the certificate signing request objects in a cluster. The listing shows a pending state. Now we need to approve the certificate signing request object, then list the certificate signing request object again. it will show an approved and issued state. Now we need to extract the approved certificate from the certificate signing request, decode it with base 64 and save it as a certificate file. Then view the certificate in the newly created certificate file. And now it is time to configure the Cube Control Client Configuration Manifest with the student user's credentials by assigning the key and certificate. Then we create a new context entry in the Cube Control Client Configuration Manifest for the student user associated with the LFS158 namespace in the Minikube cluster. And now view the content of the Cube Control Client's configuration manifest. And we will observe the new context entries, the student context and the new user entry student. <laughs> 
While in the default Minikube context, let's create a new deployment in the LFS 158 namespace. We are going to create a deployment running an Nginx Alpine container. From the new context, student context, let's try to list pods. The attempt fails because the student user has no permissions configured for the student context. Now the following steps will assign a limited set of permissions to the student user in the student context. First, let's create a YAML configuration manifest for a pod reader role object, which allows only get watch list actions in the LFS 158 namespace against pod objects. Then create the role object and list it from the default Minikube context, but from the LFS 158 namespace. Now let's create a YAML configuration manifest for a role binding object, which assigns the permissions of the pod reader role to the student user. Then create the role binding object and list it from the default Minikube context, but from the LFS 158 namespace. Now that we have assigned permissions to the student user, we can successfully list the pods from the new context, the student context. In this video, we learn how to authenticate users with keys and certificates and how to authorize users by assigning permissions with the role and role binding objects of the RBAC API group. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.